Brock Purdy, Lamar Jackson, the two MVP frontrunners. Whoever wins this game wins the MVP, most yeah. likely. Lamar wins this game, boom. Biggest game, biggest win of the season for anyone. He wins the MVP. And if Brock wins it, it's just the coronation. Who would you rather have? Who would you rather build your team around? You had your pick. Yeah, so not not who I'm picking for MVP. That's a different question. You're right. I think whoever right. does win this game, that's that's going to be your front runner for MVP. That's pretty obvious at this point. Because I think Lamar has moved into number two behind Brock at number one. Yeah, it can't be Dak or freaking the Hurts. No. No. And they no won't Dak. give it to Tyreek Hill because, again, wide receivers. wide receivers are discriminated against in the NFL. It's not fair. Yeah. I'm a wide receiver advocate. Yeah. Yeah, you, you really are. You should be a wide on the table agent. for it. Wide receivers are people too. <laughs> All right, who would I take between oh. Brock and Lamar? I'm building my team, so I don't have an offense in place, anything like that. I'm taking Lamar Jackson, man. I mean, first of all, Lamar has done it for longer. Lamar, we know, can do it with less weapons. He, did, he hasn't had any major receivers of note. He When the team, when he goes out, we know what the team results are. The team loses a lot. In fact, they struggle to make the playoffs. They limp into the playoffs. They had like a, a two and a half game lead over the Bengals last year. He missed like the final six games and the Bengals finished first in the division. <laughs> so you can see how much he means to that team versus a replacement level quarterback. And really the weapons, they just haven't been there. And he's performed year after year. He has won an MVP youngest to ever do it unanimously. And he's just the most dynamic quarterback in the NFL, the most dynamic quarterback since Michael Vick. His skill set is extremely unique. And I think a lot of people who don't watch him think he's not a very good passer. And I completely disagree. I watch every Ravens game because my son's a Ravens fan. He's improved a ton as a passer. I'm taking Lamar Jackson. The skill sets are just two through the roof. So I would too. I would take Lamar Jackson too. We've seen him play for Greg Roman, gimmick, and we've seen him play now for Todd Munkin, who's fine. Yeah. If you put him on a team with Mike McDaniel or Kyle Shanahan, like Kyle Shanahan, they're so creative. They've gotten the absolute best most out of their quarterbacks, Brock Purdy, Tua. Like those guys, you couldn't get more out of those guys. And they're really good quarterbacks. But I don't think you could say that about Lamar. He's never had a coach like that. He's never had a team like this. If you put him with Kyle Shanahan, like this is what it would look like. Remember what it looked like with Robert Griffin III when that team was kind of unbeatable for a while and that offense was kind of unstoppable? He'd be able to do a lot of that stuff, but plus so much more. Nothing against Robert Griffin when he was young, but Lamar is way better than Robert ever was. And Kyle coached him. Kyle would know exactly what to do with Lamar Jackson. I think that would work. I mean, there would be there would be no limitations to the offense. Not that there are now, but I'm taking Lamar. He's a creative coach's yeah. dream. He is. He is. And <laughs> he, he's had, I'm looking at his receiving leaders by year. So he came in, really took over in 2018. So John Brown, Mark Andrews, Marquise Brown, Mark Andrews, Mark Andrews, and then this here's Zay Flowers. He just hasn't had the receiving help at all. At all. And Andrews is out. Yeah, and Andrews is out. It's a great point. Yeah. Is he coming great back? Uh, the, I think there's hope that maybe by the AFC Championship or Super Bowl, he'd be back. But what is Maddox not hearing? Before them. Uh, Maddox's ear is to the streets. He's hearing the same thing. That's what I'm saying. Trying to pass off information you got from Maddox like you knew it yourself. Like, come on. Yeah, 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 I know, I know, I know. He's actually right here whispering. He's AFC Championship. What's up, Maddox? How you doing? <laughs> Matthew Sanders says, things got worse versus Cleveland as Brock lost his cool. Finally, late fourth quarter, he found his rhythm. Kyle will scheme it up. Brock Purdy just has to hit it. Ayuk all day. All diddy diddy day. Jeff Caravella says, what's up with Hargrave and Armstead? They playing Monday? Can the D-line stop the run without him? Maddox, I don't, <laughs> I don't think in this game it would be a very good matchup at all if those two are out. I, I don't like their chances at stopping the run. I don't see how Hargrave plays. You pulled your hamstring. That's a three-week injury. You're 300 pounds. You're going to rush back so you could potentially make it worse and not play in the playoffs. Like You don't have to win this game. 
You win two of the next three. You clinch the first round by. It seemed like it would be pretty unnecessary and irresponsible to just rush him back onto the field if he's not ready. But I don't know. Maybe it's a hamstring tweak. I I personally, I know a lot of people are trying to figure out, okay, what's what's the path to success for the 49ers as they enter the playoffs? You know, should they rest guys in week 18, really take a two-week rest? I, I don't subscribe to that at all. I don't think they should rest their players at all in week 18. I would prefer to them for them to go for the win in week 18, play, stay in game shape and, and in competitive shape mentally, take your week off, and then get ready. I think taking two weeks off would be a major mistake. I, I don't like that strategy personally. I don't like it either. 